Hello students, this is the instruction video for slides 8, 9, and 10 of the Unit 3 Physics Project. So taking a look here, we are now talking about work and power now that we've already learned about these in class. So remember that the work done to get the roller coaster to the top of the starting hill is going to be equal to the change in energy. So it's actually going to be equal to the potential energy at the top of our starting hill. To prove that to ourselves, remember that work just equals force times distance. And so your force due to gravity is mass times gravity. Uh, Fg equals m times g. And your distance here is the height of the hill. So if you were to plug those in, where m times g equals the force to gravity and the height of hill a equals the distance, then it says that work equals mass times gravity times the height of hill a, which is actually the same as your potential energy of the height of hill a from slide number four. All right, so again, uh, you can think of it as the change in energy which is why it would be the same as your total energy in the hill. Or you can also think of it as the equation ends up being the exact same equation that we used on slide number four. So your answer right here on slide number four, your total mechanical energy should actually also be your answer for the work that is done on hill A. All right, so taking a look here, this should be the same as slide number, oops, sorry, slide number four. Um, what you're going to go ahead and do is then we're going to go ahead and actually calculate work here. Okay. Um, and the way that we're, uh, sorry, we're going to go ahead and calculate power here. So the way that we're going to go ahead and do this is we're going to choose a motor horse, uh, um, horsepower. So choose a horsepower between 20 and 200 horsepower and just type that right there, right? So delete where it says type here and just fill in 20 to 200 horsepower. And then you're going to go ahead and convert that to watts. So the way that we do that is you're going to plug in the number that you put here and multiply it by 745.7, and that will give you your answer in watts. Okay, so for example, if mine was 15, which you can't do 15, right? But if, for example, mine was 15, then I would multiply that by 745.7, and I would end up with over 11,000 watts. All right, so that's what yours should look like, okay? Um, then what you're going to go ahead and do is you're going to go ahead and calculate the actual time that it took to reach the top of your hill. Now please note this is not entirely accurate just because it doesn't take into account the incline of the hill, um, but for our purposes this still helps us to kind of understand what's going on with work, power, and time. So taking a look here, what you're going to go ahead and do is you're going to go ahead and um, we rearrange the power equation where power equals work divided by time, and this time we're solving for time. So we made it be work divided by power. Okay, that's just some quick algebra there. So what you'll do is you'll plug in your work from right down here. Again, that was your answer from slide four, as well as the power from up here, make sure it's in watts. So for example, it should be a really big number <laughs> like we just did of like how mine was over 11,000, right? So you should have your big work number divided by that power number and that'll give you your time in seconds. Now, your time in seconds um, to get your roller coaster to the top of your hill with that type of motor, um, it could be a really fast amount of time, so just to make sure that we understand what that is in minutes, we should actually divide it by 60 to find this number in minutes. So what you'll go ahead and take do is take this number, divide it by 60, and that will give you the number of minutes it takes your, your motor to get your roller coaster to the top of the hill. Hopefully, this is around like one minute. <laughs> if it's not around one minute, that means that either your the, the horsepower that you chose is way too small, in which it takes a really long time to get to the top of the hill, or it's way too big and your people are going to get sick as they get to the top of the hill. Okay, so that's slide number eight right there. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about slide number nine. Okay, so for slide number nine, um, this one is all about mechanical advantage. Remember that you watched a recording on Thursday to go over the three H notes for mechanical advantage. So if you have not yet done that, I highly recommend go watch the three H recording and do the three H notes. That way you are familiar with mechanical advantage. So mechanical advantage though, um, it tells you how easy it is to um, use a ramp or an inclined plane here. Um, so we want to assume the slant or hypotenuse of our inclined plane leading up to the top of starting hill A is 200 meters long. And we want to know what is the mechanical advantage. So remember that to calculate the mechanical advantage or how easy it is to use to, to um, do the work, um, the same amount of work, uh, the equation is length divided by the height. Okay, so the length here we said was 200 meters long. Again, that's our slant. Right, so 200 meters right here. 
and the height of your hill A, right, should be HA, which is on slide number two. Okay, so make sure you go back up to slide number two and take a look at your height of hill A right here. Okay, um, so what you're going to go ahead and then do is you are going to go ahead and plug that in, the height of hill A, and then just do 200 divided by that number, and that will give you the mechanical advantage of a hill that is 200 meters long, okay, uh, with a hypotenuse of 200 meters. Again, remember that mechanical advantage is a good thing, so this actually means that it's blank times easier, okay? So this could say two times easier, three times easier, four times easier, right? So that is what mechanical advantage is. Now we're going to do the same exact thing, but this time talk about um, what if our slant is even longer? What if it's 350 meters this time? Then what would be the mechanical advantage? How much easier would it get be to use that inclined plane to get to the top of our starting hill? So same thing here, we would plug that in for our length. You can see that's already plugged in for you and plug in your height of hill A, which again was on slide number two. So again, it's this number right here from slide number two. Okay, so let's go ahead and fill that in. Again, HA, HA is from slide number two. Okay, and you would plug that in right there and do 350 divided by HA, okay? And that will give you your answer for the mechanical advantage of that type of incline. Um, and again, mechanical advantage is a good thing, so this is telling us that it's this many times easier to do the same work of getting the roller coaster to the top of the hill. Okay, so that many times easier. Um, so uh, let's, let's go ahead and take a look here. The engine, as an engineer that may need to maintain the roller coaster, which hill would you prefer to walk up and why? Again, you want to think about which one is easier to walk up, right? So find the one, find the one with more mechanical advantage because that one will be easier, right? So if this one says two times easier, this one says three times easier, then choose the three times easier one. If this one says four times easier, and this one says two times easier, then use the one that says four times easier, which would be this one. All right, so make sure you look at your answers here and figure out which one would you prefer to walk up and talk about why. And again, the reason why is because it has more mechanical advantage and is easier to do the same work. Easier to do the same work. All right, so feel free to take what I wrote here and just kind of retype it in your own words and in a complete sentence. So retype in your own words slash complete sentence once you decide on your correct answer here. Okay, um, so the last slide here is just a reflection. So talk about, um, reflect on the name that you gave your roller coaster. So remember when you drew your roller coaster, took a picture of it, you should have had a name on it as well. So reflect on the name that you gave your roller coaster and do you feel like your drawing represents that? And then would you ride on your roller coaster? Why or why not? Um, again, please don't write, I don't know, I don't care, or anything that's like a blanket statement. Please be specific um, if you want points for this. Thanks so much, and I will see you later.